Live from Sue M. Daughtridge Stadium in Charlotte, North Carolina, it's time to kick off day three of the 2018 Conference USA Softball Championships here on BN Sports. Hello, everyone. Sean Fox alongside Bethany Doty. Winner's bracket final right now. We've got six-seeded Middle Tennessee against top-seeded Florida Atlantic. Winner moves right into tomorrow afternoon's championship ball game. The loser will play later on this afternoon. One more contest in this double elimination portion of the tournament to move on to play for the automatic berth into the NCAA tournament. Summer Burgess is in the box. Tatum Buckley in the circle. First pitch is lifted into right center field. Madison Palmer drifting back to make the catch. And that is our first out here on a gorgeous Friday afternoon, 84 degrees, our game time temperature. A little bit of a breeze has just kicked up as well, blowing straight out towards center field. Tatum Buckley is 16 and 10 on the year with a 2.09 ERA. This is her 30th appearance of the year, 24th start. She's got 117 strikeouts and 174 innings of work. There's a strike to Precious Birdsong. Top of this Middle Tennessee lineup has been red hot in this tournament. Birdsong leading the way six for 10 at the plate with a triple RBI and three runs scored. Showing bunt, she's gonna show off the speed throw by Buckley, not in time. Birdsong again, showing off the wheels. That's her seventh hit of the tournament already and Middle Tennessee has a runner aboard. Middle Tennessee playing their fourth game as you check out their lineup. Kristen Usselton stepping into the box. This is their fourth game of the tournament. They had to survive both games Wednesday when day one was single elimination here in Charlotte. This is just the second game for Florida Atlantic as Usselton takes the first pitch for a ball. Florida Atlantic needed a seven run bottom of the sixth inning yesterday to storm back and beat Louisiana Tech seven to four. They were down four nothing down to their final six outs at the plate and exploded for those seven in the sixth. Downstairs here for a ball. Usselton hitting 293. A couple of homers and 18 runs driven in. But struggling through the three games thus far here in Charlotte. One for nine. Does have a couple of RBI. There goes Birdsong. Pitches a strike. Throw down. Not in time. Birdsong with her 29th stolen base of the year, and it's another runner in scoring position for Middle Tennessee. Middle Tennessee having Birdsong on base is definitely beneficial for them. Having her in scoring position, this can be a good time for Olsen to get a line drive or deep fly ball, try to move the runner up. Middle Tennessee by far the hottest team in this tournament with the three victories. Pitch here missing three and one. Wednesday, they rode the left arm of Corey Jennings, who's back in the circle today. And to get here yesterday, how about 11 runs on 13 hits to knock off UAB 11 to six. There's a pop-up foul out of play off to the right. Corey Jennings on Wednesday threw a two-hit shutout, getting Middle Tennessee into the double elimination portion and then followed it up with a no hitter after that beating FIU for nothing. Time here called is head coach Joan Joyce in her 24th season making her way out to the circle. What's definitely helped Middle Tennessee is they're jumping early, early in the count, early in the game, trying to get on base, trying to score runners early, trying to get them some momentum going. There's the defense you see for Florida Atlantic, Amanda Peck in left, Madison Palmer in center, Samantha Lagier in right, Caitlin Burke, Emily Lockton, Jolie Duffner, Lauren Witt, third to first on the infield, Alex Miller catching behind the plate for Buckley this afternoon. Morgan Harris stepping into the box as Usselton is aboard. First pitch fouled back out of play by Harris. 352 average, four homers, 39 runs driven in on the year for Harris. Two for 10 here in her three games in Charlotte, a double RBI and run scored. 
We had an illegal pitch called on Tatum Buckley. That resulted in a walk there to Usselton to put her aboard. You see Harris trying to put the bunt down with one out, but couldn't do that, do it that time successfully. Middle Tennessee, this is what they do. They try and jump on you quickly. They did yesterday with four runs in the first inning. Any kind of momentum they can continue to build on is what they're looking for. Here's a changeup called strike three. That's a big second out in the first strikeout for Buckley this afternoon. That's a great pitch by Buckley. She trusts it. She knew she'd get the job done. An 0-2 count. She can throw what she needs to try and make the batter chase. Middle Tennessee came into this tournament dropping their final two games of the regular season against Marshall and have reeled off three straight here to open up the tournament. Lexi Cushing taking strike number one. Her average is at 350, a team best 14 homers and 48 RBI. She's got 14 of the team's 33. Check swing, plate umpire P.J. Gallardo saying she went around. Rodney Smith is at first, Troy Kuykendall our third base umpire. FAU may have gotten a break right there. Buckley just getting a piece of that changeup that we've seen not only from Buckley, from Jennings as well. We'll see it from her today. That's just been so effective this weekend. Agreed, both pitchers are throwing that changeup for a strike. They're trying to get ahead in the count. Being able to throw that changeup consistently and having the batter swing is what's really making them be a very successful. Another two strike pitch fouled off to the left. Buckley got the complete game yesterday. Gave up four runs, three earned on five hits to Louisiana Tech. A couple of two run homers served up by Buckley. But then her offense, as we mentioned in that seven run sixth inning, able to bail her out. Here's a swing and a miss. It's back-to-back -back strikeouts for Buckley to retire the side. One hit, two runners left on. Half inning complete. FAU, the top-seeded Owls, coming to bat when we come back. Absolutely. Trying to, with me. He's trying to hide. Back here in Charlotte, North Carolina, no scores. We head to the bottom half of the first. FAU will get their first crack at Corey Jennings in the circle for Middle Tennessee. Second game of the day on Wednesday, Jennings with a two hit shutout, striking out four. And believe it or not, that was her worst performance of the day. She followed that two hitter up with a no hitter against FIU, four strikeouts in that one. Yesterday, perhaps some fatigue catching up with her a little bit. She went the first three innings, gave up four runs against the Blazers. Only one of those was earned. Three errors by her defense yesterday didn't help her. Five hits, couple of strikeouts. Jennings, the gamer, back in there to face FAU as Emily Lockton leads it off and takes a strike. Lockton, a 350 average. 11 homers, 31 runs driven in. Outside there, one and one. Locked in yesterday, one for three. Drew a walk in that come from behind victory against Louisiana Tech. Here's a one-one pitch crushed into deep right center. Birdsong and Coochie will run out of room. 
Home run number 12 for Lockton. A great way to start for the Owls. 1-0 here in the first. Emily Lockton's such a great hitter. You have to try and pitch around her, and that's what Jennings tried to do, that high pitch. All Lockton had to do was use her physique body and take it that way. Towards the scoreboard in right center field, exactly what you said, up and out over the plate. Quickly got out of here. 210 to the gaps at Daltridge Stadium. 220 to straightaway center. We have seen a handful of home runs throughout this 2018 tournament, and all of them have gotten their money's worth. Madison Palmer going to step in now. Here's a first pitch strike. Good bounce back pitch there for Jennings. Palmer leading the team with a 401 average. A home run in 24 RBI. There's that very effective changeup from Jennings as Palmer swings and misses. That changeup's been very successful for Jennings. She needs to keep trying to throw that, get ahead in the count. There it is again, and this one results in a soft roller over to first. Danny Munoz will take it to the bag to get out number one on the board. Samantha Legere to the plate. The junior right fielder is hitting 284. No homers, 18 RBI. Legere yesterday, three for three at the plate. A double RBI walk and run scored. And on top of that, she added a couple of stolen bases against the Lady Texers. First pitch change up there, missing upstairs for ball number one. Bunting foul, it looked like for a moment, Morgan Harris behind the plate couldn't pick it up. But fortunately, coming back behind the dish for a foul ball. So ball in the strikes as Legere stands back in. 284 average, fourth best. FAU hitting 271 as a team coming in. Now that's a little more than 30 points less than Middle Tennessee leading the league with their 303 average. There's a change up for a strike. That's the bread and butter pitch for Corey Jennings. Certainly this weekend as she tries to rebound after giving up the solo home run to Lockton. Just missed outside. Saw this yesterday from Jennings. She tried to stretch the strike zone. Both inside, outside, up and down as well. There's the change up and it's a strikeout. A swing and a miss by Legere. That's her first, two gone. So tough to fall behind Jennings. What may even make it worse is you know the changeup is coming and you still can't quite do anything with it. As a hitter, it's hard to stay back. You see it, it looks like it's right there, but you can't seem to keep your hands back. Tatum Buckley taking a strike. Chance to help herself out. She's in the circle today for FAU. 234 average, three homers, 36 runs driven in. That one further outside for a ball. Buckley one for three with a RBI double yesterday. Also drawing a walk. All of the damage for FAU coming in that sixth inning. Here's a change up, a little floater out into right. Charging in is Cucci. She dives. Can't field it cleanly now. A snap throw back to first. And Buckley just able to get her hand back in. Cucci did a great job. As you can see right here. Little pop-up going into right field. She sees the angle, tries to dive. Just can't seem to hold on to it. Right as you're leaning forward to start that dive. Tough play. Cucci nearly corralled it in. Two out hit for Buckley. will bring up Mia Olsen. Jennings getting ahead of another batter quickly with strike one. Olsen hitting 290. Four homers, 20 runs driven in. 0 for 2 with a walk yesterday. Pops the 0 1 pitch back and out of play, and quickly Jennings ahead again here, nothing in two. 
both teams today need to find a way to sit back on that changeup, try and drive it the other way, and make sure that they can keep their hands back, do some damage with that pitch. These two teams split their regular season meeting. Final game getting rained out. Here's a pop-up this way, first base side. Just out of play. Right near our perch here down this first base line. Couple of pop-ups this way. We'll take those kind of pop-ups. We don't like the line drive stuff coming this way. Definitely. Pop-ups instead of line drives, I'll take it. <laughs> Here's a ball outside, one and two. Six, seven upperclassmen in this starting lineup. Here's another chance for Coochie and Wright. This time she'll make it standing up. To retire the side, the solo home run by Emily Lockton gets the Owls on the board. One run, two hits, one nothing Owls after one here in Charlotte. Back here in Charlotte, Sean Fox and Bethany Doty with you. one nothing FAU as we head to the top of the second, thanks to the solo home run by Emily Lockton. This is the first time in 22 innings of this Conference USA tournament that Middle Tennessee has found themselves on the opposite side of the scoreboard from what they're used to. They had the one nothing victory over North Texas on Tuesday. Then they had the 4-0 victory, I beg your pardon, Wednesday. 4-0 again on Wednesday. And in 11-6 yesterday against UAB, Claire Smith, Danny Munoz, Kirsten Cucci to lead it off. Middle Tennessee, plenty of firepower in the arsenal. They put up a threat there in the opening inning after the single by Birdsong and walk to Usselton. And now Claire Smith going to stand in and lead things off. Six, seven, eight, part of the lineup for the Blue Raiders. Tatum Buckley getting back to work in the circle. First pitch is upstairs for ball number one. For Middle Tennessee to stay successful, they need to keep jumping early, trying to get on Buckley, trying to get on Buckley early so they can get ahead with the bases, try and score the runners. That's been successful for them. Here's a hard grounder over to short, locked in, making the play to first. One down for Danny Munoz. These two teams in their regular season series about three weeks ago now, April 21st and 22nd. Middle Tennessee won the opener six to one, but lost game two, four to three. Final game of that series washed out due to weather. So this is their season rubber match. Pop up third base side here, just off of the top of that third base dugout. Burke was there just in case it came back. Strike one here to Munoz, hitting 280 on the air. Four homers, 17 RBI. Munoz only played in one of those two games back in April. 0 for 2 with the walk and couple of strikeouts. She's two for eight here, however. Two for eight, a home run, a double, three runs scored. She's knocked in four. Two strike pitch from Buckley down the left field line and it lands just inside the chalk line. 
It's a one out single. Munoz is aboard for Kirsten Cucci. So she takes that inside pitch, drives it, just barely gets it down the left field line. That's a great job by Munoz, staying in with an 0-2 count. And all it takes is one base runner, kind of a spark to light the fire, especially with the Middle Tennessee offense. Mentioned league leaders earlier at 303 coming into today. Coochie hitting 217, three homers, 16 runs driven in. Middle Tennessee 37 and 20 coming in, but just the number six seed in the tournament. Of course, once you get to tournament play, you can throw all those numbers out the window. Here's a rise ball upstairs. Coochie's having some fun here at the conference tournament. She's four for seven, a double home run, couple of RBI, four run scored, hitting 571 through the first three games. Once you get to conference play, it doesn't matter. But all the stats before, once you get here, this is when it matters. Well, as you see so very often in tournament play, it's not necessarily the best team who had the best regular season. It's the hottest team. Who can get hot perhaps at the end of the regular season, carrying that momentum over into the tournament? But Middle had lost their final two games of the regular season. They waited until now to best, turn it on. Best time to get hot. <laughs> Just missing outside there is Buckley. Counts even now, two balls and two strikes. Keely McGee in the on-deck circle. She's in the number nine spot. Two-two popped up back out of play. Both teams with a couple of hits here early on. The difference so far. Locked in solo home run to give that young lady right there, Tatum Buckley, a 1-0 lead. Another 2-2 down this first baseline, but foul. Looked a little out in front. Still made some solid contact, but unable to keep it fair. Coochie's having a great at-bat. She's finding pitches that are close in the zone, fouling them off so she gets the one that she likes. That's what you need, especially when you have your lead off or when you have your runner on first. Coochie a junior, so one of your upperclassmen. You start to rely heavily on the upperclassmen when you get to this point of the season. There's another example, just getting a piece of it, a little rise ball from Buckley. And Coochie's staying alive yet again. Yesterday, Cucci two for three, two RBI, three of those 11 runs scored in the 11-6 victory. And again, staying alive. Let's we'll see what happened here, dropping the bat. Coming up grimacing after that foul ball. Oh, well, they're, they're going to call, apparently, Cucci out here. Let's take a look at the replay. It hit off of something. It was either her hand, which is what Part they may the be saying. It's still a foul ball, though, if, if anything. It looked on that replay, it looked like it hit off the, the I thought it was a foul ball. Yeah. Right, watching it live, I thought the same thing. But what they're going to say is, I guess they're going to say it did hit her hand, but the motion of her swing is still a strike, regardless if you're hit by the pitch or not. Head coach Jeff Breeden out to have a chat with home plate umpire P.J. Gallardo. Gucci came up. You saw her grimacing right there, and that very well could be why she came up grimacing obviously if you get hit but a lot of times you can get jammed too and you know this is a hitter if you get jammed then you can feel that sting and the vibration of it here's a different angle of it 
to have hit her in the... Well, there on that replay, it looked like it hit her up on the shoulder. shoulder. Top part of the arm there. So we're thinking hand when she came up grimacing, but on that different angle. Looked like it hit her in the shoulder. Then there's no mat. We'll check out a slow-mo shot of it here. Let's see. Oh, you know Definitely. what? That it hit her in the shoulder, but I think she did swing and miss. You saw the bat right around the belt and hitting her up on the top of the shoulder or in that general area. That's a that's a swing and a miss. If it would have hit her bat or hands at all, yeah. Well, well that changes my mind. Now. Initially, mm -hmm. I thought she got a piece of it to stay alive, but a great shot by our crew there, slow mo, slowing it down to help us out and. That ended up being that, a good call by the ump. That was hard to see from our angle. That's the third strikeout. Keely McGee standing in now from the left side. She takes a strike one. McGee, a 264 average, a home run, and 10 RBI. Tough for the fans to see. Some still unhappy with what just transpired, but. I think maybe watching that slow-mo replay later on may change their minds. Certainly did mine as this one's popped up. Shallow left, locked in the shortstop, makes the catch. Two retire the side, no runs, a hit, one runner left on base, inning and a half, complete one nothing FAU here in Charlotte. Back here on the beautiful campus of UNC Charlotte. Graduation day here on campus. One of three graduation ceremonies. They'll have one today, two tomorrow here on campus as the spring semester winds down. Graduation not on the minds of anyone here at Daltridge Stadium. Lauren Witt standing in to lead it off. Only thing on the minds here, the final four teams is a championship title tomorrow afternoon. Lauren Witt hitting 250, a home run and 17 RBI. That's a strike at the knees. Jennings happy to get that low strike call, something she did not get yesterday. 1-1 one, one here just outside. That's a good spot by Jennings. Trying to hit that outside corner against Witt. That's what you need to do. Try and get ahead in the count. Witt 0 for 2 yesterday. Did have a sacrifice bunt. Hitting 250 on the year. Smashes this one to short. Bobbled off the heel of the glove by Burgess. Owls have another leadoff man aboard here in the second. Witt knew that last pitch was close, so that, that next time she got that outside, she took it that way and hit it hard to Burgess, couldn't just hold on to it. Duffner will stand in. Second baseman hitting 224 in her second season with the Owls. No homers, nine RBI. She'll take a strike to open up her first at bat. It is an error charged to Burgess there at shortstop. 
first error of the day. Sixth by Middle Tennessee in three plus games now here in the Conference USA Tournament. See if Duffner thinking she may try and drop a bunt down, but she'll take strike two, quickly fall behind. Nothing in two. Owls do have that one run cushion. But we've seen teams, especially against Jennings, try and take advantage, play small ball, do anything they can to get something going. Here's a little roller over to Shore, and that's underneath the glove of Burgess. Duffner is aboard, Witt down to second. Second straight error on Summer Burgess. As an infielder, when you make an error, it's hard to bounce back, and the fact that she got another one right after, she's got to try and make that play. Watch, watch the ball all the way in. Burgess expecting a, a little bit of a bounce there, but the ball staying down on the clay surface here in Charlotte, as we've documented throughout the tournament, a hard surface, if you can chop something out in front of home plate, it can take a big bounce and it can clear the entire infield. But right there, just the complete opposite. It stayed along the turf and kept rolling right along. Burgess didn't get her glove down in time. No doubt on that one, you gotta, with the slow roll, you gotta play ground up. Now trying to bunt her way aboard is Miller. Harris picking that up in foul territory. So now with the first two aboard, it does change things. And now head coach Joan Joyce going for the small ball. Try it again, and the same result. Fouled right back, nothing in two. That's a good job by Jennings, bounce back. Throwing that high pitch is really hard for a hitter to bunt. She took that to her advantage. FAU trying to take advantage of back-to-back -back Middle Tennessee errors here to open up the second. Quick throw back to second, but Witt was already on top of the bag. Ball and two strikes here on Miller. 264 average in her final season. No homers, nine RBI. Gets the change up, lofts it out into shallow right center field. Cucci coming in to make the catch. Nice job by the Middle Tennessee right fielder to squeeze out number one and more importantly, keep the base runners where they are. Now it's up to Amanda Peck. The Owl left fielder, senior hitting 239, no homers and an RBI. Hustle Tendon Munoz on the corners of the infield, up protecting against a bunt, which you see Peck try and do right there. And tip it straight back into the mid of Harris behind the plate. When you're trying to bunt a changeup, especially as a slapper, you gotta slow your feet down, read it out of the hand, see the top of the ball and try and put it down. We saw that in yesterday's game with Middle Tennessee. Precious Birdsong was called out trying to bunt, but was too far outside the box. That there. typically happens a lot, especially for a slapper with that slow pitch. You try and slow your feet down, it's so hard, especially to completely stop your swing, to stay inside the box. 1-1 one, one showing bunt again, up and away. And we've seen some slappers go up there and get that change up, but their momentum literally has them outside the box when the ball crosses home plate. And some of them have literally had to hold up swing so they wouldn't be called out in those situations. There's a strike at the knees, two and two now. Jennings should be out of the inning. Should have been a three up, three down inning. But a couple of errors here in the frame, keep it going. Here's a ground ball through the right side. It gets through. Lauren Witt being waved around. Now the throw's cut off and Witt quickly scrambling back to the bag. What an at-bat by Peck. She took that pitch, drove it to the left, right side of the field. That's what she needed to move the runners over. Again, Coochie out in right field for Middle Tennessee quickly coming in to grab the ball. Hit Munoz, the cutoff. 
But that would have, I would guess, go Middle Tennessee's way if that had to be at a play at the plate. Now you've got the top of the line of an Emily Lockton up who hit a solo home run in her first at bats. Jennings really going to have to try and pitch around Lockton. Lockton has a great, great eye. She can see the ball. She reads it out of the hand. They need to find a way to get this out. There's another rise ball upstairs, 2-0. I know after giving up the home run, you want to be a little protective as to what you throw locked in. But you've got the bases loaded here. Nowhere to put her. There's a little check swing roller to first. Munoz bobbles, throw to the plate, in time. Wow, that was a close one. In another close play. Witt called out at the plate, a bang, bang play. Fielder's choice, out number two recorded. That's a 3-2 put out at the plate. Head coach Joan Joyce did not like the call. That was a close call, especially with Munoz coming in, kind of bobbled the ball a little bit. Found a way to get the out still. Madison Palmer standing in, fouling the first pitch back. That could have been Middle Tennessee's third error of the inning. But Munoz able to recover in time. And now Corey Jennings is one out away from leaving the bases loaded and perhaps getting a little momentum into her first base dugout. There's the changeup. Swung on and missed. Nothing in two. As you can see, the middle defense is definitely back, trying to get some ground so they can get a play, easy base, bases loaded, two outs, just trying to get an out right here. There's the changeup, swung on and missed. FAU gets an out at the plate, gets a strikeout from Jennings to leave the bases loaded. Off to the bottom of the second, still one nothing FAU. Back at Dodger Stadium here in Charlotte, North Carolina. one nothing Owls as we head to the top of the third. Sean Fox and Bethany Doty here with you. First of three here on the diamond today. UAB and La Tech in an elimination game coming up at 2.30. The winner of that game at 2.30 survives to play the loser of this one right here between Middle Tennessee and FAU. Winner of this one going straight to tomorrow's championship here in Charlotte. Middle Tennessee will have the potent part of the lineup up. And that's the top with Summer Burgess, Precious Birdsong, and Kristen Usselton to the plate. Here's a slap into left, charging in as Amanda Peck, squeezing a big first out, keeping the leadoff batter from reaching here in the Middle Tennessee third. Here comes Precious Birdsong. 365 hitter on the year. She's 7 for 11 in this tournament. And most of them have traveled maybe 15 feet on the bunt. Her speed, absolutely lethal. Takes the rice ball upstairs for ball number one. Sometimes even if you're a corner and you're up and they put down that bunt, it, hers has been dying and bird song so quick. There's sometimes you just can't make that play. 
There's a strike back on Wednesday night against FIU, her last at bat. Everyone expecting another bunt and a slap from Birdsong. Well, she slapped it all right to the gap in left center field. It cleared the outfielders. And she was on third base very quickly with a triple. So she can beat you that way as well. Here's a shot down the left field line into foul territory, nearly making the catch. Amanda Peck, great effort. And Peck nearly making a spectacular play there for out number two. Birdsong will get another chance at the plate. What a, what a good jump there by Peck. That's that's one of those that you try and help out your pitcher, try and get out of the out, especially with how fast Birdsong is. Try and help out Berkeley. Being very aware of the situation, exactly. That's a that's a great point. Here's a slap through the hole on the right side. Birdsong aboard yet again. Her second hit of the day, eighth of this tournament. Middle Tennessee has the tying run aboard as Kristen Usselton will come to the plate. Well, coming up in the fourth inning here this afternoon, we'll get a chance to talk with each head coach, Joan Joyce of FAU, Jeff Breeden of Middle Tennessee. Those have been fun interviews throughout the first couple of days of this tournament. Here's a strike to Usselton. She drew a walk back in the first inning. Now you got to keep your eye on Birdsong at first. Already with a stolen base in the first inning. She's got 29 on the year. A 60-foot mad dash sprint to second base. Here's a hard bunt. Bobbled twice by FAU three times. Everybody's safe. Buckley misplayed it. Locked in, or excuse me, Burke at third. Bobbled it a couple of times. Elston did a great job executing that play. She put the bunt down, ran hard, made it hard for the pitcher, Buckley, to try and get off the mound to make that play. As you can see here, lays the bunt down. Buckley tries to come, make the play. Just can't make it in time. It's going to be an error charge to Burke over at third base. Strike one to Morgan Harris. She was called out on strikes back in the first inning. Buckley had the same exact situation, first and second, one out. She got Harris on strikes and Cushing, who's in the on-deck circle, on strikes as well. There's a strike, and she's quickly on her way to another one, jumping ahead of Harris here, nothing in two. Again, as you can see, both pitchers are trying to get ahead early. 0-2 counts, they can throw whatever pitch they want to try and get the hitters to chase. 0-2, fly ball, fairly deep into right. Legere making the catch. Birdsong tagging from second. Snap throw to first. Hits Usselton diving back in. Time called here. Usselton going to roll over slowly, make her way back up, deserving so. The throw cut off, and the back throw behind her drilled her diving back in. Honestly, that cut by Emily Lock Lockton was a great job. She knew how fast Birdsong was, and she knew that she would make it to third. As you can see here, great at bat, takes it to the right side. We keep our we eye see there. Usselton kind of trying yeah. to get off, see where it goes. That's a great cut by Emily Lockton. She found a way to try and get that runner out at first, knowing how fast Birdsong was, that she'd be safe at third. Diving back in, it got... Usselton on the right side. Actually, looked like from our vantage, we're looking right at first base here where she's at. Kind of lodged up underneath her as well, which is somewhat rare. Usually you get hit on the back or, or leg perhaps. Possibly a better throw there. Could definitely have gotten the out there at first. Two out chance here. Lexi Cushing taking a strike. Tying run 60 feet away. Cushing striking out back in the first. Buckley trying to get out of another jam. There's the change up. She's now one strike away from doing just that. It's been a little bit since we've seen Buckley throw that change up here in these first top three innings. She threw it a lot in the first, kind of straight away from in the second, but starting to come back to it here in the third. Two-strike pitch. 
Jamder, a soft pop-up over to second. Duffner squeezes it. And Buckley gets herself out of the jam yet again. A hit, an error, two runners left on. Still 1-0 FAU here in Charlotte. Back here at Daltridge Stadium, the 2018 Conference USA Softball Championships continuing here on day three. We start the day with four. We end it with two, playing for the title tomorrow afternoon. Been a great tournament here in Charlotte. Legere, Buckley, and Olsen, three, four, five, part of the lineup to face Corey Jennings here in the third. Legere struck out back in the first. Drops down a bunt. Munoz to first, not in time. Speed of Legere beating out the bunt single. Third straight inning, the Owls have put the leadoff batter aboard. Today not only has been about the errors that have happened, but also the short game. Both teams are putting down bunts, laying it down, running it out. It's a great job trying to execute that play. Well, no doubt FAU aware of what Jennings has done here in the tournament. Everybody is, especially when you throw a no-hitter. Owls trying to do everything they can, and they're talking more strategy here in this quick timeout. If it takes a bunt 10, 15 feet out in front of the plate, if that gets you a base runner or better yet gets you a run in, that's what you got to do. Tournament time, it don't hold anything back. Now Buckley here with a chance to move Legere up at least 60 feet. Buckley had a base hit to right back in the opening inning. Here's a chopper left side charging as Burgess. Quick release, nice play by the Blue Raiders shortstop. Just as effective as a bunt, Legere ends up at second base, one gone. With Buckley making it bounce enough, it got just enough height that Legere can make it to second, especially with her speed, to not able to turn the double play. It's hard enough to turn a double play in softball with it being 60 feet between bases and the speed now of the game. Here's a changeup tipped into the middle. Harris behind the plate. Olsen down 0-1 and is 0 for 1 today. Fly out to Coochie and Wright back there in the first. Here's a shot over to third. This one snagged by Elselton, and now they've got Legere in a rundown between second and third. Who can execute it better? It's going to be Middle Tennessee with a hard collision. That's the lead runner being retired for out number two. Great Look. job by Usselton there. She got, you can see. Yeah, watch this. She got drilled too. She says a fake throw, has Legere in the rundown, ends up with the out. So Olsen now, here's the and flip. And Usselton in the collision too. Yeah, right there. Both teams don't want to play this afternoon. They're showing all the emotion and doing everything they can to avoid having to play in the loser's bracket today. Lauren Witt taking the first pitch outside. Here's a line shot into right. That's a base hit. Throw to second, too late. That rundown right there that you just saw saves another run. 
for the time being anyway, first and second. Two outs, inning continues now for Jolie Duffner. Again, that's a great heads up play by Usselton. Thinking ahead, trying to get the runner off far enough so she can get in the rundown. Without that, that runner does score. Time called as we get set for a conference inside the circle. Again, to talk about how well Middle Tennessee has played here in this conference tournament, almost an understatement. They played the second game of the day Wednesday, back and forth pitcher's duel with seventh seeded North Texas. They got their run in the bottom of the sixth. So grab the momentum there, put the pressure on the mean green who were unable to get that tying run across and carried that momentum five or six hours later into the nightcap when Jennings threw her no hitter she was absolutely untouchable in both games on Wednesday and is, I don't want to say single-handedly responsible, but certainly from the pitching core and not to take anything away from Amber Baldwin. She was fantastic yesterday in relief of Jennings when Jennings kind of ran out of gas there a little bit. Back to action we go here. Ball one to Jolie Duffner. Carolyn Rosa running at second base now as a pinch runner. Here's a grounder over to Usselton at third. On to first in time to retire the side. No runs, two hits. FAU threatens but comes up empty. We're off to the fourth. Still one nothing Owls here in Charlotte. Back here in Charlotte, Sean Fox, Bethany Doty with you. one nothing FAU on top. Let's go down to the field and have a quick chat with head coach Joan Joyce. Coach, the one run there in the first inning, the home run by Emily Lockton. How important has she been at the top of this lineup for you? Uh, how important has she been on our team is probably more like it, okay? The, 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 the kid could be legit one of the best players in the country. Uh, um, she could be legit one of the best players in the country. So far, Buckley doing well in the circle as well. What do you like from her this afternoon? Um, I think that she's got to keep changing, changing the uh, speed on the ball, the pace, you know, to uh, keep them off balance and uh, keep their speedsters off base also. Uh, it's going to be a battle. It's going to be a battle the rest of the afternoon. Perfectly said. Thanks, Coach. Perfectly said. Thanks for the time. Good luck rest of the way. Thank you. Thank you. That's head coach Joan Joyce in her 24th season here with the Owls. High praise for her shortstop, Emily Lockton. Her final season, final conference tournament with the Owls. Wants to see Buckley change it up a little bit there in the circle. Try to keep Middle Tennessee off balance. Claire Smith going to lead things off here for the Blue Raiders. First pitch is up for ball number one. We referenced this a couple of times. Small strike zone when Claire Smith steps in from that left side, and she's used it to her advantage. She has. She's definitely waiting for something that she can drive, and she likes in her zone. 
There's another rise ball that's upstairs, 2-0. and oh. Middle Tennessee has not had the leadoff batter aboard yet today through three innings. Same scenario yesterday, but a leadoff double by Cucci in the fourth inning against UAB got them headed into the right direction. There's a strike, 2-1. and one. Smith 0 for 1. She grounded out to short back in the second. Munoz and Acucci to follow. 305 average in her freshman campaign. Here's a liner out into left, but Peck is there yet again to make the grab. The placement of the outfield's perfect. They're reading off the batters. They looked at their stats, clearly know where they hit the ball mostly, and so they've adjusted to it. And that's a great job by FAU to find out a way to get out. And in addition to all the scouting reports from the regular season, everybody here practicing Tuesday, everybody watching the games Wednesday and Thursday. So everybody familiar with each other. There's almost no secrets as you get this deep into a tournament. Danny Munoz takes a strike. Well, especially for Middle Tennessee, they've been, they just their fourth game. And so right. everyone's seen them at least once to know where their priority hits are going. Munoz with one of the two hits for Middle Tennessee. Takes a pitch upstairs here, one and one. Munoz two for eight. Now three for nine here in the tournament. Takes a strike on the inside corner. Saw Munoz kind of turn back thinking it was too far in, but instead it's one and two. Buckley's hitting that inside corner spot on Munoz, especially today. Munoz last at bat, luckily got could be able to hit it down the left field line. Let's see if she can do it again. One, two, hit deep into center, but Madison Palmer's drifting back shy of the track. Two gone for Kirsten Cucci. Blue Raiders are hitting the ball hard, but they're hitting it right to Seems like either Amanda Peck in left or Madison Palmer there in center. Lockton's made a couple of nice plays there at short. Cucci 0 for 1. She went down swinging on strikes in the second. Good cut there on the first pitch, but fouls it right back. What I like about Cucci, she's very aggressive. She's always looking for something she can drive early in the count, try and get it on base for here for Middle Tennessee. Gucci was at the plate. Her strikeout is the one where she ended up getting hit right around the left shoulder, but had gone through with a full swing, a swing and miss, and that takes precedence over getting hit by the pitch, so that's why she went down on strikes. Count here evened up at one and one. Four for eight now here in Charlotte during the tournament. Just missed outside. You could see the hands right there. Cucci wanted to go after it, but a good eye to lay off. You could see Buckley's pitch definitely had movement towards that outside outside corner, and Cucci was able, able to hold on and not swing at it. 2-1 right on the outside corner. It seemed like Buckley got a little bit extra behind that one, maybe disagreeing with that previous call but popping the mid of Miller behind the plate. Looking for her fourth strikeout of the day. Low and away, ball three, full count now, three and two. We'll talk with Middle Tennessee head coach Jeff Breeden after this half inning. Payoff pitch. Swung on and missed, fourth strikeout indeed for Buckley. Retires the side in a one, two, three inning. No runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left on. One nothing Owls, you're watching the 2018 CUSA Softball Championship on BN Sports.
Back here in Charlotte, one nothing our score. FAU on top of Middle Tennessee. Before we start this bottom of the fourth, let's go down and have a quick chat again with head coach Jeff Breed. And coach, first time you've trailed here in the tournament so far. What do you keep telling your girls to try and scratch across at least a tying run and get yourself back in this? We just need to shorten our swings up a little bit, get the barrel to the ball. We got we're kind of long swinging right now. Maybe hit a little bit early in the count, and we can get right back into things. What do you like from Jennings inside the circle so far, minus the one pitch there in the first inning? Uh, yeah, other than that, she's done fine. I mean, you know, Lockton can hit. She's a great player. So, I mean, anytime she can, she can one swing, she can change it. She got it. So, but we'll continue to fight as we go. All right, Coach. Thanks for the time. Good luck. Thank you. Head Coach Jeff Breeden here in his sixth season. First time we've talked to him on the wrong side of the scoreboard here in Charlotte. First three games. Great, got the three victories. Now, granted, only down one nothing. Still plenty of time for Middle Tennessee, and like we were just saying, they're hitting the ball hard. They just can't get one to fall right now as Jennings gets back to work. Alex Miller, Amanda Peck, Emily Lockton leading things off. 8-9-1, part of the Owl lineup. Miller 0 for 1. She flew out to Coochie and Wright back in the second. Now she's going to have a base hit to Coochie and Wright. Cucci comes up with the throw to first just in case, but it's a leadoff single for Miller. Owls are four for four in getting that leadoff hitter aboard. And that's what you need for a team to win. You gotta have that leadoff batter to get some momentum. So you can do some small game, move the runner over to cover in scoring position. That's a great job by Miller getting on for a leadoff. Amanda Peck takes the ball to open up her second at bat. She had a base hit to right back in the second. Six hits now for FAU, as we just mentioned, all four leadoff batters in the first four innings reaching. But they're only on top one nothing. That goes to show you what kind of stuff Jennings is featuring in the circle. Peck unsuccessfully trying to bunt her way there. Time called. Ball and a strike coming up here on Peck. Activity in the Middle Tennessee bullpen. Just in case Amber Baldwin loosening up again. Here's a ball called foul at the plate in the box. Peck will come back and get a second chance at it. That came up and got her a second time. Plate umpire P.J. Gallardo saying it did get her in the box. Well, that was awfully close, too. We've seen couple of those in this tournament just a bad break where it pops back up and gets you outside of the box but it's a ball and two strikes now Jennings has stranded six owls on the bases there's a strikeout number three for the left-hander one gone top of the lineup Emily locked into the plate that's a good job by Jennings Getting ahead early, not letting Peck put down that bunch and get that strikeout without advancing that runner. Especially with Lockton coming to the plate. She's already left the yard once. That was the solo home run in the first. And that's the difference so far. That was the mistake pitch we were just referencing with Coach Breeden. There's another one outside, 2-0. and oh. Jennings. Not wanting to serve up anything here to lock in over the first couple of pitches. 350 average, 11 homers, 31 runs driven in. That entered today. There's the changeup, and boy, you could see Lockton just kind of start and then just all of a sudden buckle herself up and stop. She saw that pitch. She knew it was coming. She sat back on it, but waiting for the one that she can drive and take it's out of the park is what she so wants. So tough knowing <laughs> it's coming. and. You still can't do anything with it. Outside here, three and one. Again with Jennings, I'd be careful what I throw with the three-one count. Hitter, this is a hitter's count, especially with locked enough. I'd be careful what I throw. It's the changeup and it's outside. Ball four. Madison Palmer to the plate. Miller down to second. So first and second for Palmer. But Lockton's been aboard three times now. Kind of the unintentional, intentional walk. 
Palmer coming up 0 for 2 on the day. So knowing Lockton's already left the yard, you don't necessarily want her to hurt you again here. Here's a strike to Palmer. Palmer and her teammates in that third base dugout thought it was low, but instead strike number one. Jennings loving this. She's getting to stay low, low in the zone, which is helping her, and especially with her changeup and fastball. Pitch there just missed inside. One and one. And that was, I don't want to say struggles. Again, when you throw a two-hit shutout on Wednesday and a no-hitter after that, giving up four or five hits seems like a struggle, but Jennings wasn't getting that low pitch yesterday compared to what she is here again today. There it is, another one in for a strike. Well, you can tell the battle between Jennings right here. Six hits for FAU, and she's still battling with only one run on the board. She's doing a great job getting it in play for her defense to work. There's strike three. Snap throw to first. Locked in diving back in. Four strikeouts. Head coach Joan Joyce has popped her head out of the dugout. She wants to talk with home plate umpire P.J. Gallardo. Couple of calls in that sequence to Palmer that she didn't like. Not only did she not like, but neither did FAU or the coach. They felt those were really low for especially what he's been calling. Kudos there to Jennings. Once you see where you're getting a strike as a pitcher, you always want to try and stretch that zone, whether it's down further, in and out, or even up in the zone in softball. She is using that to her advantage, especially with runners on first and second. She's finding ways to get out, especially she knows since he's calling it down, that's where she's throwing. Jennings, the senior, she's been here before, working the system quite nicely. One for two is Legere standing in. She takes a strike, and Legere can't believe it. Boy, if Jennings gets that pitch continuously throughout the day, that makes her even tougher to hit. There's the changeup, and then, oh, by the way, she's still got the changeup in her back pocket. <laughs> uh, not only does she have that low fastball, but also a changeup that hasn't really been hit very hard today or a whole week. FAU, knowing that low strike will be called, has to make an adjustment in the box. They may not want to. You take that many swings, you know the strike zone pretty well, but you've got to protect whatever zone is being handed to you on the, any given day. As the foul ball there straight back keeps Legere alive. Always tough for a hitter, too. You've got your, your zone that you have in mind, and then when you get a strike call against you that you don't like, you've got to figure out a way to adjust. Exactly, and even if that's pitch by pitch, at bat by at bat, you have to find a way to adjust. Here's a ground ball up the middle, off of second base into center field. Miller will score. Down to second goes Legere. FAU cashes in anyway. 2-0 here in the bottom of the fourth. Like we said about adjusting, Legere did it. She moved up in the box, saw that low pitch, took her hands to it, drove it up the middle to score that run here at third. Here comes Tatum Buckley to the plate. Seven hits now for the FAU Owls. What's impressive about Buckley is she's also pitching and she's not letting anything affect her, vice versa of whatever's happening. If she's hitting good, if she's hitting bad, it never affects her. Here's a floater into right that scores one and will score two. A two out, two run single by Buckley. She helps herself out and doubles the lead out to four nothing. Hits are contagious. Once you get one, you get people on. It's easy to keep it going, especially with the way that FAU's been hitting and seeing the ball. They've been doing a great job executing plays with runners in scoring position. Well, yesterday against Louisiana Tech, FAU needed just nine pitches in that sixth inning to put up a couple of singles, a double mixed in there as well, and three runs just like that. 
So they can certainly do that, and they're giving you an example of it right here, jumping out to this 4 nothing lead. Because the pitch. Right off the bat, you see Lockton jogging in. And look at the wheels of Legere rounding third base, almost still in that arcing motion with it only being 60 feet around the base pass. And still being able to stand up. You can tell her speed there, and especially where, where the ball was hit. Mia Olsen back at the plate. 0 for 2, fly out to right, fielder's choice back in the third. one -oh, change up ripped down the left field line. That's a fair ball. Right past Usselton there at third base. The contagious fourth inning continuing here for the Owls offense. That's their fourth hit here of the inning. They came into this fourth inning with just four hits over the first three innings. And now they're starting to catch up here to Corey Jennings and putting Middle Tennessee in a very unfamiliar spot they haven't been in all tournament long. Well, for Jennings, it's hard. She's throwing everything she has. She's been throwing a fastball. They're starting to hit that, trying to scoot up in the zone. Also, right then, they just had that, or they just had Olsen who hit that changeup, and that's the first time that someone's actually drove that pitch hard, especially to left field line. And that's what made Jennings so effective earlier in this tournament, Wednesday and even yesterday. That changeup was working Wednesday. She was getting the low call, as we saw here earlier in this fourth inning. And it seemed as if FAU, well, it doesn't seem, they were. They were getting flat out frustrated. And had they not gotten one of the runs, let alone the three here in the fourth inning, who knows what that could have done with momentum and the, the mental aspect of it. We talked too about the mental aspect of the game so much and how things can quickly change on you. And it looks like Middle Tennessee will make a pitching change here in this fourth inning. The conference in the circle, they're kind of buying some time and they will. Amber Baldwin gonna jog in from the right field bullpen. Corey Jennings can re-enter. She's going to head down to the bullpen to perhaps take a break, maybe work on a couple of pitches that she didn't feel were being quite effective enough. But that changeup seemed to be working fine. FAU is finally able to wait back. And as we say, so hard that is to do to wait back. FAU is doing it and has put together a three-run inning. Yeah, sometimes as a pitcher, it's just tough luck. And that's what happened to Jennings right there. She's been working all week. Change that's been working for, and now that they're trying to figure something out, FAU, a great hitting team, adjusted to it and made the adjustment soon enough in the game so they could get three runs here in the fourth. Amber Baldwin coming in after her four innings yesterday against the Blazers. Two runs, three hits over those four innings. And most of that damage against her. Matter of fact, all of it in that seventh inning when UAB put their final two runs up. She had only allowed one hit during the first three innings of her relief appearance. Solo home run to Annalise Petrie, and then a double to Rachel Rogers that ended up scoring. Another error mixed in there as well. And Baldwin back to work here with Lauren Witt in from the left side. First pitch is away for ball number one. Not only, not only Middle Tennessee taking that pitching change, but also calling that timeout kind of slows down FAU's hitting momentum that they were building. That's a great point, too, with everything going so well so quickly. Even just taking a two- or three-minute break can calm them down, calm down your emotions as well. Try to keep things right now just to a four-run deficit. Here's a foul ball at the plate. Ball and a strike here on Witt. One for two on the day. Reached on an error in the second. Single to right back in the third. Nine hits for FAU. 
Here's a shot out into center, but Precious Birdsong is there to make the catch and retire the side. FAU opens it up, three runs on four hits in the inning. We're off to the fifth, four nothing Owls here on BN Sports. Back here in Charlotte, Dotridge Stadium, 4-0 FAU. Threatening to open it up there with that three-run fourth inning. Tatum Buckley with some insurance for herself. Literally, she came up with a two-run single there in that fourth inning to put the top-seeded Owls up 4-0. Winner moves on to the championship tomorrow. Don't have to mess around the rest of the day. It'll be elimination games coming up at 2.30 and 5 o'clock here in Charlotte for someone to earn the right to meet, as of now, FAU, if they hold on to this 4-0 lead. Middle Tennessee will have Keely McGee lead it off. Top of the lineup, Summer Burgess and Precious Birdsong to follow. McGee 0 for 1. Fouls the first pitch right back out of play. Nothing and 1. McGee popped up to locked in it short to end the second. Entering with a 264 average, a homer and 10 RBI on the year. Downstairs, one and one. With being down four runs, Middle Tennessee really needs to work at trying to find ways to get on base. Get that momentum built, even if it's by walk, hit by pitch, base hit, anything. Trying to get some momentum built so they can try and score in these extra runs. And as much success as the top of the lineup has had, too. If she can get on leading off from her number nine spot, then that sets the table for Burgess and Birdsong, who we've seen multiple times in this tournament, reaching with something as simple as a bunt out in front of the plate. 2-1, a little floater down the right side. That's going to drop in for a base hit. There is McGee setting the table with the leadoff hit. First leadoff batter to reach in any inning for the Blue Raiders, and that may be just what they need to try and get back in this. Here comes Summer Burgess in from the left side. She's 0 for 2 on the day. Forward motion, missing there. Ball one from Buckley. A fly out to center and a line out to Peck in left. Peck creeping up as Burgess starts that forward motion on her slap attempt. Here's one up the middle, diving is locked and that gets through into center field. First and second, nobody out. Here come the Blue Raiders. Like we were talking about, hits are contagious. They got that leadoff batter on. Burgess came through, you can see right here. Pitch, stayed through it up the middle, locked and diving, but not in time. It's a great job keeping the bats going. Right through the legs of Buckley in the circle. And Birdsong's already two for two. She's got eight hits in this tournament. She's eight for 12 coming into this at bat. Pops her bunt attempt up, but it's foul along the third base side, so she gets away with one there. The hard thing with Birdsong is you don't know if she's going to bunt, she's going to slap or hit. She has She's so good at handling the bat that the corners still need to creep in, but you never know if she's going to pull back and swing. That's so what we were talking about her last at bat. She can drop a bunt down on her. She can plant it in the left center field gap for a triple. And there you see she's swinging away. 
Good call by you. Same exact thought. But now she's down nothing in two. With how she handles the bat, you never know. Even if nothing in two, if it's one that she thinks she can put down and run out, with how good Birdsong is at, with quickness, I mean, she could run it out. Here's a liner up the middle. Locked in dives. Can't come up with that one. Here's a throw to the plate. Not in time. And that bounces away. That's going to give each base runner another 60 feet. Middle Tennessee is on the board. They've got second and third. Nobody out. Birdsong at it again. 0-2 count. Found a way to drive that ball right back up the middle again. Here we see it right here. Stays steady. Takes it up the gap. Locked in again. Trying to dive. Make the play. Just not in time. The throw home. You saw the ball bounce up. It short hopped Miller from behind the plate. So likely an error charged to Madison Palmer on the play. It's a good read by Burgess. Seeing that bounce going behind the catcher. Seeing that she has to move to go get it. Taking that extra base and Birdsong following. Kristen Usselton to the plate now. Here's a laser down the left side, but that one's foul off into the bullpen. UAB Blazers taking batting practice in those cages down that left field line. Grabbing that softball. That ball was smoked by Elselton, but she was just out in front for strike one. With who's on, who's on base right now, you have Burgess and Birdsong. Anything that's up in the air somewhat deep, you're going to score at least one and move the next runner up to third. There's a good take downstairs. Ball and a strike. Middle Tennessee coming to life here in this fifth inning. Even if you can get one more, say cut the lead in half, make it 4-2, gives yourself a much better shot. And on the flip side, you got to keep the FAU bats quiet. Here's a shot deep into left. Amanda Peck at the track, makes the catch. Both runners will tag. It is a 4-2 game. Usselton gets the RBI on the sacrifice fly, and she just missed tying this ball game up at four. Time is called. We've got Birdsong down at third base. FAU just apparently appealed to second base in which first base umpire Rodney Smith apparently just called her out. So we've got a lot going on right here in this fifth inning. That's a big second out. Birdsong still sitting over there by third. First and foremost, let's check on Birdsong with the head first slide over there at third base. It's a hot and humid day. I didn't see anything unusual with the slide. But we've got both training staffs for Middle Tennessee and FAU attending to her, along with the medical staff here at Charlotte. Good to see her sitting up right there at third base. It's a big aspect to this team. They need her to try and get back up. And, you know, it's kind of one of those things where you're like, we need her. She's three for three, works hard, gets the team pumped up. Definitely a catalyst at the top of this lineup for Middle Tennessee. Up on her feet. She's going to walk off out of play. So Middle Tennessee will have to find a replacement for her. Could very well be just an overheating situation. It is hot, humid here in Charlotte. She's walking under her own power. A little bit of help. So sacrifice fly for Usselton. She is out number one. Then the appeal. Birdsong is out. Here's the slide into third base. 
Look All good bell. there. She's clapping. She stands up there. Let's see. No, she, everything looks fine. It might just be over. Oh. oh, yeah. You could see right there. Oh, that's scary. Losing her balance and just. She's, def she's overheated. Yeah, absolutely. Going right down to the bag. That's what happened. You can see head coach Jeff Breeden immediately calling for her athletic trainer to come out. And certainly get some fluids in her. So there are two outs. It's a 4-2 game now. Birdsong out on the appeal at second base. Morgan Harris to the plate. Here's a liner out into left. Peck charging in, makes the catch, and that will retire the side. But Middle Tennessee gets two of them back on three hits. 4-2, our score, four and a half complete here in Charlotte. Back here in Charlotte, Sean Fox and Bethany Doty with you. 4-2 our score. Middle Tennessee getting on the board with a couple of runs there in the fifth. But the scarier moment for now, Precious Birdsong being helped off the field after overheating, after sliding into third base. Head coach Jeff Breeden now has to change up his defense. Birdsong center fielder out right now does have the re-entry rule, which could get her back in. But after that scary situation, that's first and foremost. Take care of that. So we're going to have some changes here for Middle Tennessee in the outfield. Coochie moving over to center field now. Keely McGee is going over to right. And it looks like Deja... Portillo is out in left field now. So a complete shift of the outfield for Middle Tennessee. New pitcher for Middle Tennessee. A little bit of everything going on here in this bottom of the fifth inning. But we we'll get these changes made. It'll be Jolie Duffner. Leading it off for FAU, 7-8-9, part of the lineup. Plate umpire P.J. Gallardo having to relay all of the changes over to head coach Joan Joyce over in the FAU dugout as well. So just after FAU scored three in the bottom of the fourth, Middle Tennessee responded for their two. And we're back to having a good game here as the strike is into Duffner. She's 0 for 2, reached on an error in the second, grounded out to third in the third. Here's a pop-up down the left side. That one will fall into foul territory. Gretchen Greer, the new pitcher for Middle Tennessee. 21st appearance for her. 4 and 3 with a 3.40 ERA. There's a swing and a miss. How about that? Starting off your tournament with three pitches and a quick strikeout. Alex Miller will step in. 
Miller one for two. Leadoff single and run scored an inning ago in that three run inning. The appeal says, yes, Miller did go around on the attempt. Again, we see FAU trying to get something going, trying to do a sneaky bunt there to get on first. Rice ball is upstairs. Greer goes 57 innings, 28 runs earned. 45 hits, 47 strikeouts. Opponents hitting 218 against her. Here's a foul ball to make it one and two. This is Greer's first appearance in the circle. First appearance in this conference tournament period. Three and a half games now in Fort Middle Tennessee. And she may have to shake off some nerves, but you'd never know it with that strikeout to Duffner. And then the strikeout right here of Alex Miller. Back to back, two gone. That's a great job by Greer coming in. First time she's been in all conference tournament. Isn't afraid at all, shows confidence, gives the defense confidence. That's a great job, great pitch. And one of those pumped up in the middle Tennessee dugout, Corey Jennings, who started the day in the circle. This may be a spark for middle Tennessee. They've got some momentum with those two runs in the top of the inning. And now Greer has come out to get a couple of strikeouts and now she gets Peck swinging at the rise ball. Peck one for two, she went down on strikes. Back in the fourth inning, laying off of that rise ball, one and one. With both of these teams, you know they're gonna fight till the end, till that last at bat, last strike that they have. So Greer coming in, putting in work is great for the defense. There's a strike on the outside corner. Gretchen Greer, one strike away from striking out the side. Grounder over to short. Burgess, it's a one, two, three inning anyway. Couple of strikeouts for Greer. No runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left on base. We have played five complete here in Charlotte, 4-2 FAU. We'll keep it here during the break. And we'll keep our eye on this first base dugout. Two runs in the fifth. You get that quick three up, three down inning from Greer. Now you're going to have the bats coming back up. Your leading home run hitter, Lexi Cushing, will be leading it off. How much confidence do you have in the dugout right now after your offense finally got a couple of runs across and then you get that performance by Greer? Oh, no doubt. You have a lot of confidence. The momentum is actually in your way. You had two hit or two run score in the fifth, and then you have Greer who comes out three up, three down. You're ready to go. The adrenaline's in your way, trying to get two runs here in the sixth, tied up. And then on the other side, Tatum Buckley, who threw a good bit of pitches there in that fifth inning and gave up the two runs. Now all of a sudden she's got to turn around and go right back to work. She may not be completely over the previous half inning. She just threw one warm-up pitch and is ready to go. Yeah, she knows she's, she has to keep pitching and also she has to go back and hit. So she's got to kind of keep that mentality of each batter just working ways to get out. One of the many seniors playing in their final conference USA tournament as you get a good look at Sue M. Daughtridge Stadium here in Charlotte. We're off to the top of the sixth inning. Cushing, Smith, and Munoz to the plate. Bottom part of this lineup. Hadn't been able to do a whole heck of a lot. Chance to change that here. Grounder knocked down by Burke. That's a start. Cushing is aboard here in the sixth inning. Cushing saw that pitch, took an advantage, opened up those hits, got her hands through, swung hard. Claire Smith, the second baseman, will stand in. She's 0 for 2. Ruled a hit. Smith takes the first pitch upstairs for ball number one. Not sure about that. It was right to Burke who bobbled it. 
Well, this is the second inning in a row that Middle Tennessee's got the leadoff batter on. I mean, that's, and that's what happened in the fifth inning. They got her on, found ways to score. The 1-0 misses, 2-0. Well, maybe they heard me when I said the bottom part of the order <laughs> hadn't done a whole lot today. That fifth inning did start with Keely McGee in the number nine spot. Here's a liner into left center field. That one gets down for a hit. First and second, nobody out. Here come the Blue Raiders for the second straight inning. That's a great job by Smith again. You know, she knows her strike zone's a little smaller for her size. She sees that pitch, takes it the other way. And also, that's a great cutoff by Amanda Peck. If that gets by her, runners at third and second. Catcher Alex Miller going out to have a chat with her infield. Very likely on a bunt defense right here. You would expect first and second, nobody out. Munoz to try and drop one down. Munoz one for two. She had a base hit down the left field line back in the second. Gonna swing away here and just missed extra bases again. Again, Middle Tennessee's specialty, being aggressive early in the count, seeing something they like, swinging hard. As a hitter with a couple of runners on, you'd much rather go up there and swing away, wouldn't you? No doubt. Finding ways to score that run is, I mean, even if it is bunting, putting down the bunt, that's also just as hard as putting it in play. Oh, one hacking away again. Another good cut, fouling this one right back. And now Munoz is down two strikes to Buckley. They do trust Munoz's swing, especially with runner at first and second and no outs, not putting down the bunt. That's a risky move, but they trust her swing. You've got Coochie in the on-deck circle as well. And she gets hit. Down to first base. Bases are loaded. Danny Munoz continues to climb up. Not sure if you want this record or not, but approaching the career record for most hit by pitches in a career at Middle Tennessee. That was number 24 in her career. Number five this season. Cucci of taking ball number one. Chance for her to make up for her 0 for 2 day with a couple of strikeouts. Time called, head coach Jeff Breeden Perhaps going to put in a runner here on either first, second, or third. Perhaps a little bit of speed. Likely at second, I would imagine. Brooke McClure has a helmet on and is ready to run. Only question will be, is it for Munoz? Yes, it will be, as a matter of fact. Munoz at first base. So McClure represents the go-ahead run there at first base. There's no better time for Cucci to get a base hit here. Even if she takes it to the right side of the field, even though they are playing in, hopefully they can find a way to manage to get one run here. There's a strike on the outside corner. It's one and one. Even if she becomes the first out of the inning, make it a productive out by getting at least Cushing in from third base. Exactly. One-one coming up from Buckley. Here's a fly ball deep down the right field line. Legier looks up, it's gone! Wow. Making up for a two strikeout day earlier with a grand slam here in the fifth inning. Middle Tennessee on top of FAU. They do not give up. They are ready all the time to come back and win. They know that they have a shot and they're here for a reason, and they're going to keep fighting until the end. Check out this swing by Cucci. The ball was absolutely hammered down the right field line. Inside pitch, sees it, turns up in the on zone. it, up in the zone, got that lift. Wow, what a swing. 
Here's a strike to Keeley McGee. Well, when they go back and watch this, they may not like me for saying the bottom of the order. <laughs> Hadn't done much starting this inning. I, think. I take it all back. Here's a bunt. Well, Foul ball. It all starts with Cushion getting on base, being that leadoff Absolutely. batter. Absolutely. Keeping that momentum going. We talked about that. It worked an inning ago. Here's the grand slam again. Look at that. Up above the belt. She knew it, too, right whenever she swung. She Perfect knew it was swing. gone. Fans in the background knew it, too. Here's a pitch up and away. Ball and two strikes. Six unanswered runs by Middle Tennessee. They now have a 6-4 lead here over the top-seeded Owls. Here's strike three called. That's the first out of the inning as McGee is retired on strikes. Top of the lineup and Summer Burgess to the plate. Nine hits aside. This Middle Tennessee team continues to be extremely impressive. Here's a grounder towards the middle, scooped up by Duffner with a quick throw to first. Burgess retired, two gone. Two gone now for Deja Portillo. She checked in when Precious Birdsong went down at third base, being overheated. Tim, that's a scary thing, and Portillo has to always be ready, or everyone that's on the bench. They need to be ready for something that happens, regardless, injury or, as in Birdsong's case, overheating. They need to be ready to go. We'll see if we can get an update on Birdsong, too, before the ball game's over with. Here's a flare out into center. Palmer charging in and makes the catch to retire the side. But Kirsten Cucci, a go-ahead grand slam here in the top of the sixth inning to give the Blue Raiders a 6-4 lead here in Charlotte. Back here in Charlotte, Sean Fox, Bethany Doty with you. Middle Tennessee, a 6-4 lead as we go to this bottom of the sixth inning. Nice job by Burgess, getting that last out to get that momentum built. You see the strikeouts here from Greer just a half inning ago, and then the ground out there to short to end a 1-2-3 inning. And she's gonna need to do the same now. This time, instead of being down two, she's up two on one swing of the bat from Kirsten Cucci. Top of the lineup, Emily Lockton standing in for the Owls. Palmer and Legere to follow. First pitch is in for a strike. Nothing in one, Coach Joyce continuing to be unhappy about the low strike call here this afternoon. Outside one and one. Locked in, got the Owls going with a first inning home run leading off the inning. Fielder's choice, a walk and run scored. Otherwise, you can see the front of the uniform covered with clay. She's been all over the place at shortstop as well today. Outside here, two and one. If you're locked in right here, you're looking for something that you want to drive. Her pitch, she usually tries to swing at anything that's a little bit belt high, get some lift on the ball and drive it out. Low and away, three and one. You know Lockton's up there, raring to go. 
We know she can hit it out. We saw it live and in person back in the first inning, but a great eye for her to good at bat to not be over aggressive there at the plate. She does a little swinging bunt here. Harris from behind the plate, not in time. Harris did everything she could behind the plate. Lockton just beat it out. You can see here, Lockton a little out in front of that one. Harris bouncing behind the plate. Doesn't get the throw in time, but what a great job by the catcher right there. Harris moving really quickly because she knows that Usselton won't be able to make that play. Bare hand, 360 spin, and then a throw right on the money, and then it's still too late. Madison Palmer standing in. She's 0 for 3 on the day. First pitch is downstairs for ball number one. And keep in mind, with as hot as it is, high in the low 90s here in Charlotte today, Middle Tennessee's got these black uniforms on top and bottom, and then Harris has got all that gear on behind her. Runner goes, pitches a strike, throw down, not in oh. time. That ball deflecting off of Summer Burgess, the shortstop, as she comes up hobbling around. That may have got her on the knee. She's got to walk this off for a minute or two. And with locked in speed, you know you have to be ready to bounce back behind the plate, and that's what Harris tried to do twice now, try and get locked in out. Stolen base number 34 of the year for Emily Lockton. I'm going to give Burgess an extra second here to kind of shake it off. Nothing's worse than a throw down that you get that hop, but kind of takes another little tricky hop on you and hits you in the knee. Well, going back to the thought, too, of them wearing the, the black uniforms, all the catch, catching gear for Harris behind the plate, and we're in the sixth inning. We've been playing for almost two hours, popping up behind the plate to make that play. You've got to lead all the emotion, the swinging back and forth of just the emotion. Holy cow. There's a lot going on right now. There is a lot going on, and both teams are very aggressive and wanting to win and are teams that won't give up, and that's you have to give a lot of respect to both teams for that. I can promise you we'll see the same in our next game between Louisiana Tech and UAB. Showing bunt here is Palmer. She has to bail out of the way. They're going to appeal. Palmer able to hold up in time to run the count to two and one. Palmer representing the tying run now at the plate for FAU. Showing bunt again. There goes the runner. Stolen base of third. Ball gets into shallow left field, but a very heads up play by Portillo out there to back it up and keep locked in there at third base. Like we talked about earlier, especially if you're coming off the bench, you have to be ready and expect everything. And Portillo was there. She saw that the throw was going down. She saw it through, was there for backup. That's a great job. 35 swiped bags now on the year for Lockton. Also a great read by her. She knows her speed. She knows what she's capable of doing. 2-2 two -two is popped up. Harris again behind the plate. That's a big first out recorded here in the sixth. Harris has been busy behind the dish all afternoon. And now for Middle Tennessee as we play here in the sixth inning, not up against the clock like you'd see in other sports. The countdown is on, however. You're five outs away if you can keep this FAU lineup in check. Here's a strike to Samantha Legere. Legere, two for three. RBI double and run scored in a three-run fourth inning that gave the Owls a 4 nothing lead. Very easily for Middle Tennessee to roll over at that point. Here's a little slap. Nice diving grab by Danny Munoz. Wow, you got Look at this emotion. You got to respect Middle Tennessee's defense right here. A lot of emotion after scoring four runs. And then you have Lockton who gets on. There's no outs. And then you have two popped ups. Munoz with a diving play. What a great job. See if we can get another look here. You see Munoz, watch behind her in that dugout. See everybody celebrating. See who comes out right there behind the FAU first base coach. That's Corey Jennings. 
That's Here's a, a strike on the outside corner. That's a great team player right there. She's been working her butt off all day, has been all actually all tournament, and she sees that Greer's just going out there, throwing pitches, getting pop-ups with runner on third. It's a great team player. Tatum Buckley at the plate. Upstairs, ball one. The grand slam from Kirsten Cucci, putting Middle Tennessee on top. Now the defense flashing leather here in the home half. Trying to get to the championship game tomorrow afternoon. Here's a liner into right center field. This is going to get a run in to the wall. It goes. Buckley on her way to second. It's a two-out RBI double. The Owls aren't done yet. It's now a 6-5 game here in Charlotte. Again, that's a great job by Buckley. She's not only pitching well in the circle, but she comes back. And as you can see in this replay, she takes that missed pitch right down the middle takes it to right center gap and allows Lockton to score but also gets a double that's her third hit of the day that's also her third RBI of this ball game as well so as frustrating of a day as it may be for her in the circle well she's been able to take out some of that aggression on the softball on the offensive side at the plate and sometimes that's hard to do if you some people can't even hit as is. They get too mental, but Buckley does a great job maintaining in the circle and at, at bat. Sammy Williams, a pinch runner at second base for Buckley. Mia Olsen at the plate, takes a strike. Olsen one for three, a base hit to left, back in the fourth. There's a strike, nothing in two, the low strike call. Middle Tennessee has taken advantage of. And now Greer is one strike away from getting out of this inning and holding on to the lead. Swung on and missed. There's the strikeout from Greer. FAU gets a run back. One run on the two hits with the runner left on base. We're off to the seventh, 6-5 Middle Tennessee. We go to the top of the seventh here at Dotridge Stadium in Charlotte, North Carolina. Six-seeded Middle Tennessee with the one-run lead over the top-seeded Owls. Winner of this one right into the championship game tomorrow afternoon. The loser here will play later on this evening at 5 o'clock for the right. They'll get another chance to get to that championship game. But a couple of elimination contests are coming up. Five runs, 11 hits for FAU, but right now not enough. Six runs, nine hits for Middle Tennessee. Kristen Usselton coming up to lead things off. Three, four, five, part of the lineup here for the Blue Raiders. Every tournament has that Cinderella. Middle Tennessee, the sixth seed, just an inning away from the title game. First pitch downstairs to Usselton. She nearly got the ball out of here in her last at bat in the fifth inning. It was a deep sacrifice fly to left. 0 for 1, a walk and an error. Reached on an error earlier. There's a low strike call. At least he's calling it both ways. He, he has, is. He has been very consistent with that low strike for both teams. I think the strike zones have been consistent all weekend mm -hmm. here at the Conference USA Tournament. 
Here's a liner into left. It's a leadoff single for Usselton. A big insurance run aboard for the Blue Raiders. Again, Usselton being a lead off, lead off on base. That's a great job for her and for Middle Tennessee. Their last two innings that they've scored, they've had the leadoff batter on base. Head coach Joan Joyce has made her way out of the third base dugout. This may be it here for Tatum Buckley. And we'll see what change we make here. Unbelievable turn of events. Florida Atlantic led 4-0 going to the fifth inning. And we've referenced it all week here at the tournament, even a couple times today. Momentum. Everything can swing in such a short period of time in softball. And here, no different this afternoon, thanks in part to that grand slam by Cucci. That's the great thing about softball. You never know what's going to happen. It's not over until it's literally the last strike and the last out. Anything can happen, and that's why we all love watching it. Mia Olson going to come in and pitch here in relief of Buckley. It's been a tough day on the pitchers. Buckley, six innings, giving up the five, excuse me, six runs, five of them earned on 10 hits, a walk and five strikeouts over her 90 pitches. Olson coming in from her DP role that she started the day in. Coming in for the 29th time, eight and seven with a 2.81 ERA. 129 innings of work, 152 hits, more than a hit per inning average. Opponents hitting 297. Olsen does not need those numbers to come into play here. She's got to do everything she can to keep this a one-run deficit. Morgan Harris in with Usselton aboard at first. First pitch strike to Harris. 0 for 3 for the Middle Tennessee catcher. Strike out, fly out to right, line out to left. 0 for 3 offensively, but has been fantastic behind the plate defensively this afternoon, once again for Middle Tennessee. Here's a changeup foul, third base side. You do have to give Harris a lot of credit for what she's been doing behind the plate. She's been blocking up pitches that were in the dirt. That one that uh, locked and hit that she jumped out of the box and did a 360 and managed to still throw a strike to first base was very impressive. And she has caught now all four games for Middle Tennessee in this tournament. Here's a chopper out in front of the plate, a swinging bunt, snagged by Miller. Throw to first, is out number one, but just as successful as a sacrifice. She moves Usselton down into scoring position for Lexi Cushing. Middle Tennessee played the 2.30 game on Wednesday and the 7.30 game Wednesday night, so they got a little break from the weather on Wednesday night, but have grinded it out here in the now summertime heat, making its first appearance here in the Charlotte area. First pitch downstairs to Cushing for ball number one. She had an infield single to start the sixth inning. That got everything going in the right direction. She lines this one out of play off to the right. Count here at a ball and a strike. Both teams have combined 11 runs on 21 hits. Two errors aside, and we're not done yet. That one fouled back. One and swing. two. Yeah, you can tell that swing that Cushing was trying to get all that ball, use the little bit of breeze blowing out to her advantage, trying to get some lift. One, two, change up in the dirt from Olsen. Still two and two. And again, of all the home runs we've seen here in this tournament, eight coming into the day, two here in this game, none of the 10 have just snuck over the wall. They have all been shots. Here's another change up that misses. Good but take by Cushing. She's trying to find ways on base again, whether it's a base hit or a walk, she's not going down without a fight. And that's what you have to respect about Middle Tennessee and FAU. 
Here's a chopper over to short. On to first for the out. For a second, it looked like Lockton was going to go to third to try and get Oselton, the lead runner. Well, luckily with Lockton's arm, she has enough power behind the ball that she's able to take that sneak peek and then go ahead and go one there. Claire Smith to the plate, had a single to left center and a run scored an inning ago. Rise ball is upstairs, chance for a two out RBI for her. And to this point in the season, I'd venture a guess to say there is no bigger insurance run of the year for the Blue Raiders than what's at third base right now, if they can get it. Here's a chopper up the middle, Duffner to first, not in time. Middle Tennessee gets that insurance run. It's a 7-5 game here in the seventh. Wow, what a great at bat there by Smith. She managed to not only, as you can see here, wait, see if we can find a replay. Here we go. You see here she manages to bounce it just enough over the pitcher's head, but also to the right side of the field, making it hard for the second baseman to go ahead and throw it across to first. Here's a strike. Nothing in one here on Danny Munoz. She was hit by a pitch and scored on the Coochie Grand Slam back in the sixth inning. Popped up behind the plate. Will Miller have a play on it? She does and makes the catch. But a monumental two-out insurance run for Middle Tennessee here in the seventh. They are three outs away from taking down the top seed and heading to the championship game tomorrow afternoon. Back here in Charlotte, the Middle Tennessee Blue Raiders have scored seven unanswered runs. They are three outs away from a trip to the Conference USA Championship game tomorrow here in Charlotte. They would be the lowest seed to advance to the championship game since 2014. But as we all know, the final three outs are the toughest to get. Gretchen Greer back in the circle. She's got Lauren Witt, Jolie Duffner, and Alex Miller to try and get through here in this seventh inning. We've seen comebacks. We know what the FAU offense can do. Can the Blue Raiders hold on? First pitch to Witt in for a strike. Witt one for three on the day, single to right back in the third. Pop up foul, third base side. After taking a low strike call, you see Witt there go down and get it. That's an adjustment FAU has tried to make throughout this game, but it's been so tough for him. But Jennings, Baldwin, and Greer, the trio inside the circle for Middle Tennessee, has used that low strike call to their advantage. Rise ball upstairs, one and two. FAU has to try and get Witt aboard here as the leadoff hitter. Change up, popped up, shallow center. Coochie coming in, one gone. That's a good pitch by Greer. Just trying to find a way to get out. Didn't throw anything too fine there. She was ahead in the count. 
managed to get a fly ball out there to Cooch. That's a great job. Want to let those of you know WTA Tennis coming up next here on BN Sports right after we get done with this one. Strike call to Jolie Duffner. She's 0 for 3 with a strikeout back in the fifth inning. Oh, one pitch. Ground ball to short, scooped up by Burgess, two gone. Again, that's another great job by Greer. She, she uses that low pitch, finds it to an advantage, gets a ground ball to Burgess. Clean strike to first. It's a great job, only one out away. Again, Middle Tennessee had to play two games on Wednesday and win both. Day one of this Conference USA tournament, single elimination. One yesterday and are now one out away from a trip to the championship game. Alex Miller takes the first pitch outside for ball number one. Miller, one for three, a single and run scored back in the fourth inning. Here's a strike, one and one. Corey Jennings has pitched her tail off in the circle all weekend to help get him to this point. Baldwin and Greer backing her up in the circle. Here's a slow roller to third that's called foul at the plate. A ball and two strikes. Ball apparently fouling off of Miller there at home plate. In this position with two strikes, you really got to protect anything close, even if you foul it off just enough so that you can manage to stay in and stay alive. One, two pitch. Outside, ball two. Two balls and two strikes. FAU trying to come up with some sort of answer here to avoid playing later this afternoon. Fouled off again. Miller just getting a piece of it. You can see with every pitch, the Blue Raider defense behind Gretchen Greer here amped up. They're ready for a strike three. They want to end this game with some sort of emphatic strikeout to get them to the championship game tomorrow afternoon. 2-2 two -two again. Foul down the left field line. We've got UAB and Louisiana Tech coming up here afterwards. Both of those two teams have actually started throwing in the bullpens down the left and right field line. As you can see here, Miller is not going down without a fight. She, has, she worked back from one, two count, two outs. You don't want to be the last out here. Finding ways to get on base to get the next one up to the plate. Another 2-2 two -two from Greer. Popped up down the right field line. McGee on the run, gets there and makes the catch. And the six-seeded Middle Tennessee Blue Raiders are off to tomorrow's championship game here in Charlotte. Trailing 4-0, going to the fifth. Two runs in the fifth. And an eventual game-winning grand slam off the bat of Kirsten Cucci sends Middle Tennessee into the championship game tomorrow. They are now 4-0 here in Charlotte during this Conference USA tournament. What an unbelievable comeback here by the Blue Raiders. What a great job. I mean, they definitely worked hard and a lot of respect for Middle Tennessee. They needed a two-hit shutout by Jennings on Wednesday afternoon to beat North Texas 1-0. Needed a no-hitter from Jennings in a 4-0 victory over FIU later Wednesday night. They turned around to beat UAB yesterday to get them to this winner's bracket game. And now they have come back to knock off FAU 7-5, 11 hits on each side. FAU left nine on, Middle Tennessee six. The Blue Raiders can now take the rest of the afternoon off. A couple of the girls there at the back of the pile 
are going to get <laughs> Coach Jeffrey, and they're going to try to. It's hot. It may feel good, but that's the only thing Middle Tennessee has failed at here in the tournament. Matty Morris is down on the first base side with head coach Jeff Breeden, who just avoided a nice cold bath. We both just avoided that bath, just barely. First appearance in a Conference USA tournament. You guys have now won four games and will be playing for the championship. What do you have to say about this Lady Raider team? I don't know what to say. I, you know, they're the cardiac kids. Uh, you, know, we, you know, I was counting us out a little bit there. We didn't have a real good job early in the day today. I thought their pitching handled us pretty well. And then all of a sudden we wake up and we go, so. Gretchen pitched great when we brought her in. So, uh, I, you know, I don't know what to say. It was just a great day for us. We're looking forward to playing tomorrow. We will see you tomorrow in the championship. Congrats, Coach. Back to you guys. Thanks, Maddie. The lowest seed since 2014. The six-seeded Middle Tennessee Blue Raiders have knocked off FAU and have punched their ticket to the championship game tomorrow afternoon. WTA Tennis is coming up next here on BN Sports. For Bethany Doty, Sean Fox saying so long here from Sue M. Dottridge Stadium in Charlotte, North Carolina. UAB and Louisiana Tech coming up next. The winner of that survives to face FAU later this afternoon to go on and try and get back into the championship game with Middle Tennessee tomorrow afternoon. Thanks for watching the 2018 Conference USA Softball Championships here on BN Sports.